I'm excited about being here today. about you? Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Let's pray for our nation. Father God, you said in your word, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all the authorities. So we thank you, Lord, for our president, our vice president, senators and congressmen, legislators, Supreme Court justices, federal, state, and local judges, governors, mayors, police officers, the armed forces, the CIA and FBI, and the judges for land, for their staff and families, ministering to loved ones. Lord, we claim their salvation. We ask you, Lord, to send laborers across their path. If they haven't received Jesus, that they do so. If they have, their eyes will stand and be enlightened. That they hearken unto the voice of the word of God and the Lord's voice. As the Holy Spirit leads them and guides them to help make decisions for our nation. And Lord, we speak peace to our country. We decree and declare our nation is a righteous nation, cleansed and covered by the blood of Jesus. That no evil shall fall us, they shall plague come to our dwelling. And Lord, we pray for all the nation of the world that everybody in this world has an opportunity to hear about Jesus and receive him as the Lord and do so. With men is impossible, not with you. With you, God, all things are possible. And we pray for all those missionaries out there, Lord, those apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers and co-laborers. They bound the work of the Lord. And thank you, Lord, for equipping them, giving them people to help them, ministry of helps, partners, intercessors, co-laborers. And Lord, I thank for anointing me today that I'll be saying do what you have me saying do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me under the Holy Ghost. And I pray for all of us, Lord, as we hear your word and hear from the Holy Ghost. We'll go forth and become doers of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's go over here to Luke chapter 10. We'll read this uh, story we have, the testimony. In Luke chapter 10, let's start here in verse 25. It's kind of lengthy, so bear with me. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted Jesus, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and thy neighbors thyself. And Jesus said to him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said to Jesus, who is my neighbor? And here's where Jesus tells his story. Beginning in verse 30 of Luke 10. And Jesus answered, A certain man went down in Jerusalem, Jer Jer uh, Jericho, and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. By chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he, when he was, uh, uh, was in the place, came and looked, and upon him and passed by the other side. And a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he uh, saw him, he had compassion on him. And went to him and, and bound him up, his, bound up his wounds, poured in oil and wine, and set him upon his beast, and brought him to the inn, and took care of him. And in the morn, when they departed, and he parted, he took two pence, and gave to the host, and said, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou hast spend more when I come again, I will pay thee. Jesus said, Which now of these three thinkest thou was the neighbor to him that fell among thieves? And he said to him, He that showed mercy. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do likewise. Now, let's read another story we got here in the book of Luke. Let's go to Luke chapter uh, 12, beginning verse 16. <clears throat> and he spake a parable to him, saying Jesus did it. The ground was certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought with himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room to bestow to sow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will fall, uh, pull down my barns and build greater, and I'll bestow all my fruits and goods. And I will say to my soul, So as much good, goods later for, for many years, eat thou eat, eat, take thou eat, ease, eat, drink, and be merry. And the Lord said, Thou fool, this night thy souls be quiet. Then who shall, who shall these things be which thou provided? So is he that laid up treasure himself is not rich towards God. There's quite a contrast here, as you can see. You know, we have this stranger that comes to this man. He finds him wounded, laying there on the curb there on the side of the road. And what does he do? He picks him up, he takes him to and cleans him all up. He's taking care of him medically and feeding him whatever, clothing him, whatever he's doing to help him out. And when he's got to leave, he said to the person that owned the hotel, you take care of him, and I, if there's anything more that he, you know, he needs, I'll pay you when I get back. But the other man we read about here, Jesus told about, both of them were certain people. That, you know, he's not hypothetically speaking, these really took place. And one man, you know, he's sort of like the rich young ruler. He's not really helping people. And, you know, we get in situations that <clears throat> every day we have an opportunity to help someone. You know, Jesus taught us, that he said, I was in prison, he came and visited me. 
I was sick and you, you know, came and saw me, like we'd go to the hospital. I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was naked. Now, why Jesus tell us these stories? Well, one of the reasons is because he wants us to emulate his, our Father God and his Father, that God so loved the world he gave his only begotten Son. You know, I don't know too many more things important as a Christian life than to give your life away. You know, Jesus taught us the principle that, that if you give your life away, you'll get to keep it. And that's sort of the key to youth, you know, that God renews your youth like the eagles. If we keep giving our lives away, that every day, you know, we become this stranger to someone. You don't have to know someone to help them. You just want to know from God's word that God taught me to give. And we also are led by an inward witness. What does God want me to do about this situation <clears throat> that I'm confronted with? And, you know, when we plant seeds, it's amazing the miracles that come out of seeds. As a kid, I liked the idea in the summertime to go out in the garden and get a watermelon. I mean, you know, the kids, you know, <clears throat> we don't. I think watermelon tastes better if you just break it on the ground and dig it out with your hands. But anyway, we'd get in spitting seed fights. Now, I suppose we could have counted the seeds that was in that watermelon, you know, if we took the time to do so. But we can never count how many watermelons as one seed. So Jesus taught us the principle, principle of my giving. And all of us as Christians, you know, we've been taught about tithing and giving primarily. And it's important that we do so. But there's much more to that. It's just not God needs our money and needs this and needs that. It's people that need it. You know, when you help your church, you're helping God. And you always want to think about, what, what can I do for my church? What is it that pastor needs, the people there? And then people beyond that, you know, people that you don't even know that you can help. You know, there's this uh, family, and the mother was an alcoholic. I read the story and testimony of Mother was alcoholic, father was alcoholic, and they had all these fights, physical fights, emotional fights, word fights, and they had three children. Well, I just didn't know they had three. One of the boys was 11 years old on Thanksgiving time. All the children were, but he tells a story about what happened to his family, and his dad had lost his job, and he said, I, 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 got, so place, I got to the place that I had five fathers. My mother had kept divorced and remarried. She was an alcoholic, and they were abusive fathers to me. So at 11 years old, it was Thanksgiving day. We have no food to eat, no Thanksgiving meal. And so the house is depressed and in the attitude in there and the atmosphere in there, the depression. My mom was fighting and drinking and my dad was fighting and drinking. And all of a sudden someone knocked at the door. And I went to the door. I'm 11 years old and I go to the door and there's a man there He's got a box of food. He's got this big kittle thing. And he brought over a turkey and all this food. So, you know, I just want to bring this to you guys, you know, to be a blessing with you. Now, that was a seed that was still in that little boy's mind. His dad was mad that someone brought this over. And, you know, strangers never help us. And we're not charity people. We don't take things from people and just through a fit. But it planted a seed in this boy's heart. But by the time he's 17 years old, he was living in his car, a little Volkswagen. And things are bad. He has nothing except what he's got in his car. But he had a $23, and this is all he's got to live on. He has no groceries. But he was kind of hungry. So he thought, you know, I'm going to go. I know this place where they got a, a salad bar, a bunch of different varieties of foods on the salad bar, and they have it one set price. So he thought, I'm going to walk over there. I don't want to drive my car because I don't have so much, I don't have much gas. He walked about over three miles to this restaurant. So he goes in there and, and gets his salad bar. It was like $6. So now he's down to whatever, whatever it was, he's got $17 left, okay? So anyway, so he buys his salad bar. He's eating. He sees this family come in. Actually, it was a woman and a little boy. And they came in and sat down. And, and as he's leaving, he thought to himself, you know what? I, I want to give something away. Because someone gave to me one day. Now, even though this guy is 17 years old, he's living in his car, and that means that life is terrible. He's been through four fathers. The parents are alcoholics. He walked up to that table and gave them the money he had, a change he had left over, and told the little boy, why don't you buy your mother lunch? And walked out. Never told anybody anything about it. He said, I didn't want any stars on my chart. I just want to be a blessing. Today, that man... Is worth $600 million. And he feeds over 3 million people around the world. It all started because someone planted a seed in his life. So you see, not only when we plant seeds, they help us because they come back to us 
good manager, pressed down, shake together, run it over, come back to us. But we also affect other people's lives. Sometimes people are kind of skeptical when you want to help them, give to them. But you know, that's one way that we as believers, that's how we live. We live by the law of sowing and reaping. We're always planting. We're always being a blessing to somebody else. And there'll be tough times to come. They come to everybody. You know, um, Isaac sowed in a famine and received the same year, a hundredfold return. And see, that's what God's seeds will do, that we plant them in love and pray over them. That we, we look not only take care of our family and people and relatives that we know, but how about people we don't know? How about you and I becoming the stranger? You know, strangers are messy, you know, are amazing people because they do something and disappear and you don't know really who they were. And you know, Jesus taught us about what we do. We do it secretly. Now you're going to find, people are going to find out what you do, but the idea is your motive is you're not looking to get attention. You're looking to be a blessing because every one of us have needs. And what we do in those needs, we plant a seed. We find something in our life that's a real big deal to us, and we plant it and give it to somebody else. And when we give that seed that we plant, God takes that seed that we sow, and he multiplies it back to us. And it works for sinners or saints. The scripture teaches as long as the earth remains, there'll be seed time and harvest time. We could always plant, and we can always give, and we should. And, you know, as we give and as we sow, um, those are, that keeps us walking in love, helping forgive other people. There's this man here named Sir, uh, maybe some of you know, especially as investors, uh, Sir, uh, Sir John Templeton. He was a bank investor, a philanthropist, you know. He, he always planted and always gave and helped people out. But anyway, during the war, Japan got bombed. And since he, was a, he had this $10,000, so he took it and invested in the economy of Japan and other places. Like today, probably like penny stock. And that turned out to be he made millions and billions, became a, a billionaire. But he was able to give away a billion dollars. Now, what did he do? He looked for times that were hard and invested in the stock market. That was his deal. It was sort of the talent that he had was investing. See, sometimes people look at the stock market, you know, and they get discouraged and think, wow, what do I do now? I've lost all my money. He took advantage of those situations, they say, in history, and he planted those seeds, and he lived to be 96 years old. I mean, actually, he lived, lived, lived um, past two wives. They both passed away. But he kept on giving, sort of like John D. Rockefeller. And he was told about 55 years old, he's going to die with his rare disease. And he thought, what can I do? So he started giving. I think he helped contribute to the March of Dimes. But those people, I don't know where they stood with Jesus, but they used the principle. They sowed, they gave. And what the seeds that they planted, it, comes back, it came back to them in ways of health, in ways of energy, in ways that you can never buy. And that's what God does. So when we're facing a situation in life, ask yourself, what, what kind of seed could I go plant today to be a blessing to someone? You don't have to know the person. Just be a blessing to them. You don't do it to be seen. That's not our motive. We're doing it because we want to be a blessing to someone else and plant those seeds. And we can look around our life and look for a way to give. Think about this 11-year-old boy, the kind of problem he was in. And look what he was able to do. Instead of becoming bitter over it, he decided, I'm going to. So when he was 17 years old, he made that decision, I'm going to help these people in a restaurant. Before the year was out, he had enough money to buy two families a Thanksgiving dinner. And he didn't tell anybody about it. He just went to the grocery store, went shopping, and took it to two needy families. Next year, he did four. The next year, he did eight. He had this goal in his heart. This is what I want to do. To get the place that he's able to do three million people. She starts out with the seeds that you plant. And that seed that you sow. One time, me and another boy were teenagers. We went to the movies. And so we took the bus downtown. I mean, it's sort of like a big deal. You know, we're, we're pretty important. So we take the bus downtown. And we go to the Ripley Theater and see this movie. And while we were there, we ate theater popcorn. I mean, what's better than theater popcorn? Especially when we loaded it down with salt. And so we're sitting there watching the movie and picking out on the popcorn we got. And we came out, you know, we're so thirsty. So we have a choice. We can wait for the bus, take the bus back home where we live, which is a long ways away, especially when you're a kid. It's a long ways away. Or we could do, he says, hey, how about we just go down here to this big wheel restaurant, whatever it was, it's like a Denny's or something. So let's go down here and let's get a soda. Well, you know, I, I didn't know about doing that. You know, is this okay to do something like this? That means we, if we do, we've got to walk home. So we go to the same place and, 
and he acts like he's always done this. And so he walks up to the soda bar they had there and sit down on a stool. I did too. And I'm trying to look at the menu, how much these Cokes cost. That we're getting ready fountain Cokes. We're getting ready to order. So he places the order for us, you know, and I'm concerned and scared because we may not have enough money. Oh, we got some change here, just enough to take the bus. Now we can't take the bus. And what happens, you know, if this costs more than what we've got? You know, the cops are coming, get you, they throw in jail, you'll be in prison the rest of your life. I mean, all these things go through my mind as a kid. So we're sitting there, and here comes this man walking up with this white shirt on. Real sharp-looking guy, walks up and says to the waitress, these boys wanted a cheeseburger. And French fries. Well, I didn't. And the guy was, yeah, you know, he was just real open about all this. And I'm concerned, oh, man, we can never pay for the cheeseburger. I've never had a cheeseburger in a restaurant before. And so the waitress brings this. And the guy gives her a look at that waitress and she knows what's going on. And so he paid for it, apparently. He had his real fancy car, a Cadillac, a new Cadillac with a convertible top. Had his white shirt on, looked real good. And he came over to me and said, you know, son, someday you're going to do something. You're going to give the people. And walked out. The guys that I'm with, he's just chowing down on food. You see, people plant seeds in their life. And it goes on. And, you know, I'm not going to say what I've done. But the point is, those seeds that they plant, not only have to help them, because they plant the seed, and it comes back to them, but they gave something to someone. One time I was going to do this meeting in New Haven, and pulled through Hartford over by the post office there. I'm going to go to Dunkin' Donuts and grab me a cup of coffee. And I just had gotten a notice. I hadn't paid attention to it. I've been gone on the road for a long time, traveling. I came home that, I think that day or the night before, and I saw, got all my mail and put it out there. And I, you know, going through the mail and tossing the trash, the stuff I don't need, you know, junk mail. And I see this thing, this notice, you know, and I throw it in the mail, you know, and it came to my heart, pick that, pick that back up. Well, I looked down, and I just, just advertised, I don't need it, you know, but it came to my heart again, pick that up. So I pick it up, and it's one of those things, cards you can open up, you know, tear the sides off and open it up. And it's, it's uh, they're going to shut off my electricity. And all this time I've been gone, my electric bill got neglected about being paid. Now, I had my electric bill not be paid because I didn't make money. And they were turned off the power. And this is a situation where somehow I just didn't get paid. Either way, you got a problem. So anyway, it has to be paid, you know, I guess tonight by midnight. You can name this drop box at the electric place. Well, my mother had sent me $100 in cash. And I had that $100. And I thought to myself, it was a $100 bill. And I thought to myself... Well, I'll just take that today and put it in a slot box and drop it off or whatever, you know, it was. Or put a check in there. Anyway, so I'm going to, but I got to go to my meeting first. So I'm going to go to New England, stop by at Dunkin' Donuts, grab a cup of coffee to go. I'm going to drink this that I'm going. As I walk outside, there's a man there. He's out there kind of asking for money. And it comes to my heart, give him that $100. Well, I give him that $100, I don't have any money left. And I, they're shutting off the electricity tomorrow. But it came to my heart, you know, and this is what I want you to say to it. I thought, well, here it goes. I don't know this guy, you know. God knows, you know, some people are real good at recept receiving, you know. So I had that $100 bill in my pocket, and I put, folded it up, and I went with a man's hand, shook his hand, and, and I said whatever the, the Lord told me to say, uh, other than God bless you, something else. Well, so I got in my car, driving away. I'm thinking about I don't have any money now, and I'm trying to believe God, you know, cast down that thought. But I got to go to this meeting, you know, I want to be thinking about this money. And I look in the rear view mirror as I'm pulling out there, and there's this man who's got to be like 50 or 60 years old. He's jumping up and down like a little kid. I thought, you know, if you never got a reward to see this guy this big and this old jumping over down over 100 bucks. So I went down and did this meeting, and somehow everything worked out. And then the next day, however it was, they didn't shut off my electricity, and I got it taken care of. I don't know exactly. I still didn't have any money, so I don't know how I took care of this, but it got taken care of. But anyway... A week or so later, I'm going somewhere, or, or a period of time after that, I'm going somewhere to preach. So I thought I'd stop by there and grab a cup of coffee. So as I went in there, got a cup of coffee, I come out, here comes this man walking up to me. So apparently he lived around here. So I just want you, I'm going to tell you something. I'm a Vietnam vet and talked about, you knew he was. 
and he went on talking about this. I live in a room, and I got a notice today, the day you gave me that money, that the, the, don't come back because I've locked your door. You're, you, can't, you don't have your room anymore. Live in a roomy house. But that $100 you gave me took care of that landlord and for days to come. I just want you to know what you did was from God. You know, it went on this way. Well, you see now, not only it was a blessing to me to learn something from it, what did I learn from it? When, God, when the Lord moves on your heart about giving, that's the time to give. It, you may be a stranger. This was a stranger that came to this person here in Luke chapter 10 and helped him out. He went out of his way. You know, when people need help, it's when they need it. So that means we have to go out of our way, whether it's using our jumper cables to jump somebody else's car. I mean, we've, have you ever been someplace and you ran out of gas? You know, I, I've been in Harlem at a place, you know, and be, you know, ran out of gas. I'm in this situation where the police aren't helping, no one else is helping. What are you going to do? Well, we're going to believe God, first of all. But God will always send someone, a good Samaritan, an angel, someone to help us out if we keep our focus on him. You know, the best thing is let you and I be used this way. We want to be the ones being used. I'm doing this meeting in, a, in this hotel in Midtown. It's right there at Bryant Park. Where they have the like where the models do their modeling, the women do in the summertime. You put up this huge white tent, you know, massive air conditioned things. Anyway, so I'm doing this meeting there, and I owe this hotel money. Now, in New York, you don't mess around with money. Not that any place else you do, but they, they want their money first before you get in this room. So I got this meeting room. It's a great place to have church, meeting room. On the first floor, right there in the lobby. People come in the lobby, they can walk right into your room. So, I had one pass, walked past the front desk, and that guy at the front desk wants me to know I want my money. I, you know, I owe some money here. So, uh, oh boy, so I go walking in there. I want to start an hour of prayer before I start. So I get in the corner here because there's windows over this room I'm in. I don't want anybody to see me praying to get, you know, thinking I'm being spiritual or whatever. So I got in this corner. I'm praying, tucked away there, and prayed for an hour on my knees. And I get up, and there's two women sitting there. I don't know how long they've been here, but apparently this watched me pray. And I said, oh, hey, sisters, or whatever I said to them, you know, good to have you. Now, the service is going to start in another half hour. So, you know, just if you, there's some materials here, if you'd like to have them, take them with you, you know. So they just sat there, and I went there, and uh, I think I changed clothes in the restroom or whatever, and came back out, started my service there, and, and went ahead and did the service, and a few people walked in from the park, or wherever they's at, maybe homeless people, or they came in, and they sat there and listened to me preach, and I didn't receive an offering, took prayer requests, see if they needed anything, saved or whatever, you know how you do. And so this lady says, oh, well, we wanted to give you an offering. So that's okay, sisters, you know, good to have you. Thanks for coming. Hope you can come back again. Well, we're just passing through, you know. Okay, well, you know, I'm packing up stuff because I got to get to Brooklyn. So I'm packing this stuff up. And the lady says, oh, I just want to leave an offering. I said, well, that's okay. You don't need to. Take some of those sheets we've got, those cards. Take those with you. You can have them in books, whatever it was, you know. Take them with you. It'll be a blessing to you. Enjoy I still got this money. I got to pay this guy. He's waiting for me to walk out of this place, I think. You're not getting out. <laughs> so this lady keeps on. Now, she looked like she was homeless. You know, you don't want to take any from her. You know, I don't need that. And so she goes, well, I, you know, I want you to take it anyway. And she puts this money in my hand. Well, I thought, you yeah, know, it's nice. She put some $1 bills in my hand, you know. And so she leaves. And so I'm still setting up, you know. And I, I thought I'd grab it. She didn't want an envelope or anything. I thought I'd grab an envelope, put on there, you know whose it is, or try to, you know, I didn't know her name, I put it in an envelope, and we deposit later on, and I looked at it, and it's all these $100 bills, I mean, just a whole bunch of them, so I walk out the front desk and said, how much, how much did you say I owed you? You see, that lady disappeared, I don't know who she was, I've never seen her since, I ran outside, looked both down 47th Street in both ways, went over to, to you know, on Broadway and looking for her, she disappeared. I mean, this is Sunday. There's not as many people there as there's on a Friday. And she was gone. She just evaporated. So I don't know if it was, you know, if this is an angel or what happened. But in the midst of that moment that I was in, God planned to see. Now, you know, God bless her what she did, if she was a person, and what she did. It could have been an angel. You never know, you know. But anyway, she did this. But only that, it was encouraging me to me. You know, when you help people out, it encourages them. You know, you're not giving them charity, like, you know, they're so poor they can't, you know, they can't make it on their own. You're planting seeds. You're encouraging them. Usually the Lord will give you, a, if he wants you to do it and, you know, walk up to him, usually he's got a message for you to tell him. Or just, you know, in Jesus' name, you use the name of Jesus and you bless them. You have the power to bless and you want to, you know, some people, 
you be led by the Spirit. You know, as you touch them, you're passing that blessing or speaking that blessing to them in the name of Jesus. So giving is the way that we live our Christian life. And we're always looking for a way we can plant a seed, especially when we're thinking about our needs and our problems and what we're going through. And people understand, I'm faced with this. We always have bills and stuff that's bigger than us. Everybody does. Even people as gazillionaires, they still have problems. But we can see here that we can always sow. We can always plant. We don't want to be like this guy. This guy's future plan. I'm going to retire and take my ease and eat, drink, and be merry, and that's it. No, we're, we take, thank God for retiring if that's what you're supposed to do. But you got to realize you're, you're going to be planting seeds all your life. You're going to be giving. And these seeds that we plant not only helps people out, but also comes back to us far greater than if we'd have kept the seed. If we'd have kept that $100, could have never done what it did for that dear man that was able to go pay his room. And pays your, and you know, when you give, or Roberts would say you become vulnerable. People will take advantage of you. I mean, you know, we've all taken advantage of God, and He keeps giving to us. He gave us everything. He didn't stop giving to us because we didn't do our agreement that we had with Him. He still gives to us. And this is one way we emulate God. This is one way we can have joy in our life. So when you face a situation, and all of us need to take the challenge to always plant a seed. You know, I'll never forget the guy in the white shirt. But what he did for my life. You know, he planted a seed. Not only that, you know, he showed integrity and being a blessing and planting seeds. Whether my friend realized what happened or not, this man affected me. The man in the white shirt really helped change my life that God used. See, God will use a total stranger to come and bless you and leave. And all God can do, you know, then by the way, God gets all the credit for what we do. So when the thoughts come to you, oh, they won't need it. They don't like it. They never did use it. You gave it to them. They may not use it. They may not like it. But it's always have that generous heart. And that's what we need to keep as believers. The world will see that. We're not doing it to get attention. We're not trying to get, you know, stars on the chart. We're not raising the, white, uh, the flag, you know, and taking attention or blowing a trumpet. No, simply, we're just implementing God. We're following him what he told us to do. I want to encourage you. You to keep on planting seeds. Be a blessing to someone. You know, find people that surround you. There's things that we can do. And we should. We ought to do it. We're busy. We have a lot of activities. But we may have some plans. But suddenly they get interrupted because we need to go help someone. And when people need help, it's when they need it. So our, our giving, our planting seeds, our doing what we could do, becomes a blessing. And we can blame. You know, Colonel Sanders has no idea that all the struggles he went through that someday he's going to have a tithe check from about $370 million he's going to be able to give to some church. And he did. He's able to bless some church out. I mean, this man's pastor had no idea when he came walking in what's going to happen here. Those are stories that, you know, and challenge you and I. We start out with just pocket change and we give in. We do it as a seed planted. We're not trying to get attention, we're not trying to get any recognition. Sure, we take care of families and loved ones and people we know and people in our church, but we're always, we're always helping we're represent God as a stranger to people. You know, some people may think we're the angels we love. I know I look like one, but hey, no. Father God, I pray for each of you today. I thank the Lord you give us a challenge to give. So when life seems stuck in our life, we can plant a seed and get, become unstuck. The seed will produce a harvest, just like those little seeds that, you, that the farmer plants the ground of beans, and they burst through the ground. The ground cannot hold that life that's in that seed underneath the ground. And Father God, we thank you that you use us every day. And I pray for each dear person today. I thank you, Lord, for meeting all their needs. I thank you, Lord, they received Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and following the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray for each pastor and each minister, Lord, they're encouraged right now in Jesus' name to keep on doing what God told them to do, to preach what God gave them to preach. We pray for all the body of Christ, Lord, around the world that we're flourishing in Christ Jesus, we're triumphing in Christ Jesus. And I decree and declare that every need is met of every person viewing this in the name of Jesus. And I thank the Lord for doing so in Jesus' name. Amen. I decree and declare you're healed today. Say this with, by the stripes of Jesus. Let's say it together. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. My God, so let's say this, my God supplies all of my need according to his riches glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Just talk that way. And keep saying, remember, I am the righteous of God in Christ. If you haven't checked out our website there, if you'd like to get the daily devotion, sign up for that. All this stuff's free. 
at your favorite price, you know. So it's there. And also, if you give me your cell number, I can text you Monday through Friday. If you like to do that, it comes out like 7 o'clock in the morning. And then also, you know, give us a heart there on Facebook. Share it with other people. Let them know you can be a blessing to someone else. Till next time, I want to encourage this brother Rich to remind you that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father.